We've all heard of the hardest problems in mathematics. The Riemann hypothesis, the twin prime conjecture, the Collis conjecture, and so on. Some of these problems are believed to be beyond our understanding of mathematics itself. These problems, therefore, reveal the frontier of math, and they are constantly the most important questions of today's mathematics field. However, I'd like to show you something a bit different. This video is dedicated to studying one of the oldest problems in mathematics, whose results are elegant and counterintuitive, yet are in reach for anyone with even the most basic knowledge. Thus, I invite you to enjoy this gem of a result with me. For millennia, people have been obsessed with shapeshifters. They worshipped the great god Jupiter, or feared the tricky Loki, who could turn into any animal they pleased. And from this obsession came its mortal equivalent, dissection puzzles. The premise was simple. Given some pieces arranged in one shape, one must form a new shape. Greek mathematician Archimedes was one of the first to study these. In his Ostomachion, Archimedes described a game in which children received 14 pieces and were asked to put them all together in a square box, or form the shapes of various animals and objects around them. The Chinese in the 18th century also created their own dissection puzzle, known as the Tangram. It became extremely popular across Europe and Asia in the following centuries. Its design was quite simple and had a similar goal with the Ostomachion. Even today, dissection puzzles remain relevant. We all know about jigsaw puzzles and tetromino puzzles, as in the classic game Tetris. The topic I want to discuss today has a lot to do with the dissection puzzles people of the past have studied and played for centuries. However, before we dive into the math, some magic. Please sit back and enjoy the show. This is one of the most mind-blowing math demonstrations I have seen. By cutting an equilateral triangle into just four pieces, one can turn it into a square by rotating and rearranging the pieces. Now to show that there are actually no animation trick, I've cut out the four pieces here. You can find a template in the description if you want to follow along. The pieces originally form an equilateral triangle. Each piece has one right angle, which will become the four corners of our square. Now. We carefully rearrange the pieces, and we get the square, just like in the animation. Here is an identical square for reference. This is known as Dudney's Dissection, published in 1907. If you still don't believe the dissection, you can find another page on it in the description as well. Even if you do believe it, I suggest you check it out. There's an even more fascinating presentation of the dissection. The problem we now want to explore is formally known as equidecomposability, or the question of breaking or decomposing an object into pieces and then rearranging them into a different shape. Questions regarding equivalence between different objects has been studied since the ancient Greeks with squaring the circle, which was a problem that asked if one could construct a square with the same area as a given circle with a straight edge and compass. Our question is similar in spirit. What shapes can decompose into each other? The most basic form of this question asks for equivalence between polygons. Given two closed, non-intersecting polygons, when is it possible to dissect one shape and rearrange the pieces to form the second? Before we move on, I'd like you to think about this problem for a bit. It's simple, just cut a polygon into tiny pixels that we can rearrange like water into the other one. In fact, this means that any two shapes can be dissected into each other just by rearranging pixels. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for the majority of polygons. Pixels are imperfect. If we zoom in enough, we'll see problems arise. To be perfect, we would need infinitely many, infinitely small pixels. Fine, back to the drawing board. How else might we approach this? Are any two polygons of the same area equidecomposable? A good general method of attack would be taking simple cases. How about just triangles to squares? We already saw a way to turn an equilateral triangle into a square. However, this method isn't applicable for other triangles, but it turns out we can find a general method. 
take any triangle. Our goal is to turn it into a square. We want to turn the triangle into various shapes, each shape getting closer and closer to a square. One shape that comes to mind is a rectangle. And after a while, we realize that we can, in fact, turn a triangle into a rectangle simply by making a cut along the midpoints and then cutting the top portion into two. We can slide these top pieces to form a rectangle. There are many ways to turn this rectangle into a square. My favorite is this swapping idea. Let's draw in a square with the same area, then make two cuts. One of these cuts is a diagonal cut. This cut forms our sliding surface and then make a vertical cut. Since the square is taller than the rectangle, we want to make a piece that makes up for the height difference. And then the remaining triangle will slide over to complete the square. Isn't that elegant? This method holds up even if the rectangle is very close to a square, or if its width is significantly larger than the height. There is one problem to this, and it's that the rectangle that we make might be too flat. Meaning, no matter how we make the second cut, the pieces cannot compensate for the height difference. Here's a rectangle where our method fails. Fortunately, this isn't much of a problem. We can turn this flat rectangle into a less flat rectangle by cutting it in half, and then attaching one piece to the other along their long sides. We can repeat this process as necessary. As long as the square is not more than double the height of the rectangle, we should be fine. So there we have it. We can turn any triangle we want into a square of the same area. Now to the more general question. What do we do with more complex polygons? One thing you will realize when solving math problems is that the small examples give quite a bit of insight into the larger problems and allow us a point of entry to the solution. In this case, given any polygon, we can triangulate it, meaning turn it into a bunch of triangles. Now, using our method, we can turn each of these triangles into squares. But remember, we wanted to turn the polygon into just one square. And here, we have a bunch of squares. So, is it possible to merge all of these somehow? It seems we might be far from the solution. But, with just one tweak, we can actually turn this into a general argument. What does combining two squares to form a new square remind you of? In other terms, how can we construct a square whose area is equal to the sum of the areas of two given squares. The Pythagorean theorem should come to mind. I mean, in its most common presentation, we construct two smaller squares along the legs, and a larger square along the hypotenuse. And in that spirit, we will be repurposing a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. In this proof, we put two small squares inside of a larger square. Now, we construct a new square. This square will be our final square. Indeed, if we merge the squares and cut it along the edges of our square, we can move these two triangular pieces to a new location where it will fill the entire yellow square. And there we have it, we have a new square. You can work out the details of the rest of the proof, but since we're only looking for the construction of this square in particular, we don't have to care about the area. However, I do recommend you to work out the proof details. So all we have to do now with our square pieces is merge them sequentially until we have one large square. So it follows that any polygon that we choose can be turned into a square of the same area. Following that logic, we can turn any polygon into another polygon of the same area. Think about turning one polygon into a square and then reversing the process of turning the other polygon into a square after that to form the second polygon. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove, that any two polygons of the same area must be equidecomposable. This result is due to Wallace, Bolyai, and Jerwin. To me, it's one of the most fascinating facts in mathematics. You probably still have one more question. What about other shapes, like the circle? The circle isn't really a polygon. It has a curvature that polygons do not have. So is it possible to turn a square into a circle, or vice versa? On one hand, we can get really close to getting a circle by approximating it with a polygon with many sides. On the other hand, maybe not. The curves cannot really be removed. Both ideas have their merits, but which one is correct? The intuition of curviness helps us prove that it's not possible to turn a square into a circle, or vice versa. Just looking at the amount of curves isn't enough. 
Instead, let's employ the following strategy. Let's label all the segments that are concave or going in red and those that come out or are convex green. Finally, color straight segments yellow. In this example, we notice that the cut is shared between two pieces. Let's compare what happens to each cut when we color it. On one of them, the top portion is red and the bottom is green, and it is flipped on the other one. This gives us an idea. Wherever there is red on one segment, there must be green on the corresponding segment. And we also notice that if one segment is yellow, then the corresponding segment has to be yellow as well because both segments are straight. So we will always have the same number of green and red segments introduced after each cut. The difference between the total lengths of the green and red segments will never change after a cut. This is known as an invariance, something that does not change after some operation. Invariants are super useful in all aspects of math. And you can see here that this in fact solves the question. Since the square starts with all yellow and the circle starts with all green, it must mean that the square and the circle cannot possibly be equidecomposable since the square will have the same length of green segments as red segments, whereas the circle will always have more green than red. And so it's impossible. Actually, let me rephrase this. It is impossible to do this with finitely long cuts and well-defined regions. However, it is possible with irregular pieces, pieces whose curves are so erratic that it's very hard to visualize. The constructive proof provided in 2017 requires approximately 10 to the 200 pieces to work. With the constraints of finally long well-defined cuts, it is still impossible. Before we end this video, let me address one question people might still have. Throughout most of the video, I assume that any two equidecomposable shapes have to have the same area. Some of you might not be so certain. I mean, in three dimensions, there's the Banach-Tarski paradox, which states that a sphere can be dissected into finitely many pieces and rearranged into two identical spheres, each identical to the original. It turns out that this doesn't apply in two dimensions. You can find some papers online about this. It is from these gems that people learn the most. While the solution may be entirely novel, the steps we take along the way teaches us so much Fascinating results can be truly enlightening with a little guidance. Thank you to my friends, the Manum community, and 3Blue1Brown for making this possible.